In this video, we're going to discuss the effect of a price floor. So let's take the market for wheat, for example. And so I've drawn a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. And we see that before the effect of any kind of price floor, we see that the consumer surplus is this blue area here. So that blue triangle, that's the consumer surplus. And this orange triangle here is the producer surplus. Okay, so that's before the effect of a price floor. And so the equilibrium price, the equilibrium price is $133, let's say per ton of wheat or however you want to measure it. So it's $133 per ton of wheat. And then we have 58 million tons of wheat, for example, that are, are produced and consumed in the U.S. Or, or something like that. So here's our equilibrium right here. So I'll just, I'll draw our equilibrium point. And again, the equilibrium price of wheat is $133 per ton. Now the price floor, what is gonna happen is the government is gonna come in and set a price floor of $200, okay? So the government is gonna come in and set this price floor. So let's draw the price floor, let's put it right here. So I'm gonna label that P sub F, price floor of $200. And what is happening is this. So the government is saying, look, it is illegal to sell wheat below the price of $200. Okay, so it's just saying it's illegal. Now, technically, technically, the government could say, and therefore, if there's any surplus left over, we will buy it. I'm not going to talk about that in the video. That's actually called a price support, right? When the government not only says, okay, the floor is going to be $200, but we're also going to buy up any extra wheat. That's a price support. We'll, we'll make a different video. We'll talk about that later. Right now in this video, we're just saying, look, the government is saying that the price of wheat is going to be $200. It cannot uh, come below this floor, okay? So when the government does this, what, what are the effects? Well, if we see at a price of $200, if we were to look and say, okay, well, how much wheat is going to be demanded and how much is going to be supplied. So the amount supplied is right here at $200. And you can see that that's higher than the amount demanded by consumers at a price of $200. And so let me draw this out. We'll, we'll put some numbers to this. So let's say, for example, that this is 100 million that, that, supply, that the wheat farmers are willing to, to supply and that, but the demand is let's say 25 million so then we see that okay at a price of 200 dollars a ton that farmers are like hey we'll we'll supply 100 million tons of wheat we think that's a great price but the consumers are saying look for that amount of money that's higher than what we're expecting to pay we'll only demand 25 million tons okay so that difference between the 25 and the 100 million that's a 75 million difference and that is a surplus that's a surplus so there's going to be some extra wheat that is left over. And that's why I talked about this idea of, of a price support. And again, with a price support, a price support is basically a price floor plus a guarantee from the government that, hey, we'll buy this surplus. We don't have that here. I just want to give you the basic example that, the, you know, so before we get into the government buying this, let's just say the government is not going to buy it. So we just we just have this surplus now. Not only do we have the surplus, we're also going to have a change in our, when we think about our consumer surplus and our producer surplus. Now, when I say surplus here, it's, it's actually pretty confusing. I, maybe I shouldn't use the word surplus just so we don't get confused. Let's say excess supply. Let's call that excess supply. But it is a surplus. If you're looking at your economics textbook, it might say surplus there. It's, it's basically mean we have extra wheat. Okay, but the reason I don't want to use surplus is because we've got our consumer surplus and our producer surplus, and we can think about the two of those added together as our total surplus. And that's not extra wheat, that's value for consumers and producers, right? We made another video where we talked about that. But that's going to change because now we look and we say, hey, we're here. We're not at the equilibrium anymore. People are only demanding 25 million tons of wheat now. So what is going to happen is we are going to have our old friend, the deadweight loss. We're going to have it right here, this amount. I'm coloring it in here and letting you know. Th so this is all going to be lost value. 
this is going to be lost value this this dark blue spot is not going to be consumer surplus or producer surplus any longer and this let me just draw this out here this is our dead weight loss which is a reduction or, or lost lost total surplus you can think of it as okay and when I say surplus, again, I'm talking about the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. When we add them together, we say that was the total surplus for society. And it used to be the total surplus was this triangle, right? It was that whole triangle. But now it's only, so, so this part of the triangle is gone. So our total surplus, our consumer and producer surplus has been reduced. Now there's also been a shift where, and, and let me just call it a sin, so now, because the price floor is here, we've got this price floor is higher. Now we're going to have a shift. So producers are going to get this. So there's actually a transfer of this amount used to be for consumers, but consumers don't get that anymore. They're having to pay a higher price. The people who are consuming wheat still, and there are a lot of people who are not because it, the price is too high, but now there's this, this surplus. So, so all of this orange, this orange part, is now producer surplus. This tiny triangle, this tiny blue triangle, is now the consumer surplus, so that has shrunk a lot. And then this dark blue, the dark blue belongs to nobody. That's a dead weight loss. So the effect of this, this price floor on the wheat, even though we might have had good intentions, maybe the government said, hey, look, we're gonna help farmers out. We're gonna guarantee them a price of $200 and say it's illegal to, to sell wheat below that. So what has happened though is, that we lo we had we have that triangle of total surplus and remember we want to maximize the total surplus and we had that whole triangle but now the only part we've got is this we don't have this dark blue part of the triangle so the total surplus has been reduced and we have an excess supply this extra wheat laying around 